Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I just want to start off by saying a huge thank you to each and every one of you. In the last week, we've grown over 700 subscribers and 20 new Patreons. I can't thank you all enough for the incredible support, and it's amazing to see our community grow so fast. So we'll be creating some, we'll be creating an ability and adding cooldowns to it using gas in Unreal Engine 5. If you need any resources or want to learn gas outside of this, I did make a channel in my Discord about gas resources. So let's go ahead and dive into creating abilities using the, using the gameplay ability system or gas in Unreal Engine 5. We're going to make sure everything's in blueprint for this video. So I'm going to look for gameplay abilities, check this, and then hit restart. So now I just want to import the following assets in order to properly be able to shoot our spell from our character. So I'm going to open up the Epic Marketplace and look for FX Variety Pack. This is a free asset pack that you can just add to your project. This will pretty much give us some certain abilities that we can add and just spawn out of our character. So I'll hit add to project and look for my project name, which is called Fireball with cooldown. And then you'll see it pop up in your content browser over here. And next, I just want to head over to Mixamo.com and in the search, I'll just type in spell and you can get this magic spell pack to just download all your spells. Or you can just look for the standing 1H magic attack 01. Um, this is the one that we're going to use, but if you want more abilities and an idle pose and so on, you can download the whole pack. So I'll just click download and make sure I'll just select 60 FPS, just personal preference, and then click download. And once that's done downloading, I extracted the pack, and then I'm just going to import my Xbot. So first, I'm going to create a new folder, and I'll just call this Anims. I'll drag in the Xbot first, so we have the skeleton. And that's so that when we use our standing 1H magic attack 01, it'll automatically select that Xbot skeleton. So I'll hit import all, and I'm just going to use that one animation. And then I will control shift S to save all, or you can go to file save all, and then I'll right click this animation and retarget it to my Quinn simple. And that's just the default um, character for the third person BP. So I'll double click to see how it looks. It looks fine. So I'm going to export the animation in this anim and just click export. And then I'll hit export. And now while this is selected, I'm going to right click and create this into an anim montage so that we can add this to our gameplay ability. So I'll call this am underscore spell attack. And that looks good to me. So now I'm just going to head back to my content folder, select blueprint class, drop down all classes and look for a gameplay ability. So I just want to select one that only says gameplay ability and hit select. And I'm going to call this something like GA underscore spell. So this is our gameplay ability. I'm going to go through my variety pack and see which one I want to use in the particle. So these are all cascade. So you can really use whatever you want in this case. So I'll use this thunderball for the purpose of this tutorial. And now I'll open up my GA spell. And once that's open, you're going to see some nodes that says activate ability and on end ability. So we want to make sure that end ability is going to be called after we finish our activate ability just to tell our game that our abilities ended. And then we can also, it'll also help track our cooldown. So I'll drag out this activate ability and I'm going to look for a play montage and wait. And for that montage, I'm just going to select the AM spell attack that we created. And from here, I want to spawn an actor from a class. And this class is going to be that lightning ball that we need to create now. So I'll head back to my project and then look for a blueprint class. And I'll just select actor BP underscore thunderball like so. And then I just need to add some. I'm going to add a cascade particle system to it. And then I'll select this and select that thunderball. So we'll see this shoot out of our character. And then I'm going to add a projectile movement. And for this one, I'll just set something, the initial speed of the fireball to something like 2000. Max speed will also be 2000. And I don't want this to go downwards after I shoot it out. So I'm going to set the projectile gravity scale to zero and hit compile. And now I can just select that BP underscore thunderball right here. But let's say you don't want only one character to be using it. You want multiple character to be using it. You can just get an avatar actor info. And this is from our gameplay ability. So I can do get avatar actor from actor info. And from here, I can actually just get the component by a class. And then that component I'm going to be looking for is going to be our skeletal mesh. So any actor that uses this spell needs to have a skeletal mesh. And then I also just want to get a socket location. And the socket location is going to be a hand R. So it's going to look for two things. Whatever actor is going to be spawning this spell needs to have a skeletal mesh and it needs to have a socket called hand underscore R. And then I'll right click the spawn transform and split the struct pin and connect this return value to the location of this so that it will just spawn out of our right hand. And now this looks good to me, but a few things that we need to do. And we also just need to give some information about adding a gameplay tag in order to tell us when to shoot our animation. So you'll see that when I go back to my anims folder and double click my am spell attack, I want that montage 
I want this spell to shoot around right here. And we can do this by creating an Anim Notify. So I'll head back to my map and a blueprint. I'll look for a blueprint class called Anim Notify. And in my Anim Notify, I'll call this An underscore spell attack. And then I'll double click to open this up. And with the function selected, I'm going to override the receive notify. And then with the receive notify with the mesh component, I just want to get owner. With the mesh component, I just want to drag this out and look for a get owner, which is going to be of type actor component. And then from here, I want to set, I want to send a gameplay event to the actor. In this gameplay event, we're going to have to make something here, which is going to be an event tag. And I'm going to have this be a little modular. So I'm just going to right click event tag and promote this to a variable. And I'll just leave the name as event tag, which is going to be a type gameplay tag. I'm going to click on this eye over here to expose it, or you can check this instance editable so that we can expose it onto our animontage. Then I'll head back to the animontage, right click in the tracks, add a notify of that an underscore spell attack. And when I left click this, there's now an event tag that we can add to it. So I'm going to go ahead and create one and the source will be our default gameplay tags.ini and this will be spell.attack and I'll click add new tag. And then I'll select that spell attack. And the way we need to get this information received by our gameplay ability underscore spell is by after play montage and wait, we're going to look for a wait gameplay event right here. And now for the event tag that we're looking for is that spell dot attack we created before. And then I'm going to wait for the event received in order to actually spawn this thunderball. And now I want to check if this, when this ability ends. So from all of these, basically after this montage is over, I want to grab this on completed and called end ability like so. And then I also want to do this for the blend out for the interrupted and the on canceled. And we can double check it by just calling this event on ability and I'll print string. And then in the string, I'll write ability ended. So the reason why we call this end ability is so that we're going to ensure that all effects are properly reset and the ability is ready for the next use. And this is just to prevent any unintended behaviors or resource leaks. So I'll hit compile and now we can go back to our map. So I'm going to right click and look for a blueprint class. And now I'm going to look for something called a gameplay effect. And I'll call this GE underscore Thunderball. And I'll double click to open this up. You'll see on the right that there's a duration and our spell is going to be an instant cast, but we do want it to also have a duration. And this has duration will kind of depict our cooldown. So I'll drop down this duration magnitude and we don't have to set anything in our curve table. I can just set this scalable float magnitude of five just to tell us actually I'll set it to three just to tell us that we have a um, three second cooldown. And now down here under gameplay effect, I'm going to add a component and this component will be a pre-populated one that Unreal Engine has already made for us. And after we add this grant tags to target actor, I want to create a tag for a spell cooldown. So under this add to inherited, I'm going to just click on this plus sign and then just type in spell dot cooldown. And this is what's going to pass the information over to our character, our gameplay ability Thunderball to tell us when our cooldown starts and when it ends. So I'll hit compile and save. And this is all we need in order to set up a three second cooldown for our spell. So going back to our GA underscore spell, I'll hit this class default and down here under cooldowns, you'll see cooldown gameplay effect class and I can select that GE Thunderball. And from here I can hit compile. And now what I want to do next is pretty much just tell our class when to actually, or tell our events when to actually commit this cooldown. So at the end, basically after we shoot out this Thunderball, I want to commit ability cooldown right here. And I'll set force cooldown to true. And essentially this is all we need in order to actually just force a cooldown for our Thunderball. I need to add the ability system component to our character. So I'm going to head back to the third person map, go to third person blueprints and open up this BP third person character. And then under components, I'm going to add the ability system. And now since we have the ability system added, we can drag out the end of our event begin play where it says add mapping context. And I can select give ability from the ability system. And the ability I want to give it is this GA spell. And now down here, I'll do a debug key F. And when we press this, I want to try to activate the ability from the ability system. And the class I want to select is this GA underscore spell. Now I want to hit compile and try this out in my BP third person character or my third person character map. Now when I hit F, you're going to see that it's going to shoot out that lightning ball. And if I click F again, it's not letting me until that cooldown's over. It's going to have a three second cooldown and make me wait three seconds until I can use this again. And you'll see on the top left, it's printing ability ended when the ability is finished or when our animation montage is, is finished so that it can commit our cooldown. Now, one thing that I personally like to do is head over to the GA spell and then under class default, I'm going to make an ability tag under spell and I'll just add something like um, Thunderball. I'll do spell.thunderball and add this tag. And now when I go back to my BP third person character, 
I'm actually just gonna try to activate an ability based on the tag. And then I'll create a gameplay tag container and I'll hit compile to add that Thunderball tag like so. And then I can try this out and it's gonna work the exact same. And that's all for today's tutorial. We've learned more about gameplay effects and adding cooldown to our abilities and how to properly end an ability. If you saw the last video, it might've been pretty repetitive, but these are some pretty necessary steps in order to slowly advance our skills in Unreal Engine 5 using gas. In the next video, I'll probably look into how to do stats. There's currently no way to set up stats in Blueprint by itself, and that's because when we open our gameplay effect, we can't add some sort of gameplay tag to our modifier. So for example, in our modifier, we would need to add some sort of um, health and mana stuff over here next to attribute. But currently it's not doable in Blueprints and we have to use C++ in order for us to initialize this and we can make our own gameplay effect child. But if you are afraid of C++, um, I'll try to keep it as short as possible. It'll probably be many of your guys' first time opening Visual Studios or something. And yeah, we'll, we'll go over that together just to show stats and stuff. And I also want to get into showing stuff like lasers or a AOE spawner. So for example, when we, do, when we downloaded this variety pack, there are particles of stuff like um, a magic circle. And I want to showcase how you can spawn this magic circle or set it at a certain distance away from your character in order to spawn it. Or maybe even something like a, like a laser that just goes on forever until you cancel it. And yeah, thanks for watching Code of the Red. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.